Hi everyone. The Lord be with you and also with you. It's not long now, just mm -hmm. four sleeps. It's very exciting, especially if you are a child. And as Mike so often reminds us, chronological age is not important. We can all be children at heart. For many people, Christmas is a time of the year when childhood memories come flooding to the surface. I know they do for me. I wanted my daughter to experience the magic of Christmas, just like I used to, even though my childhood Christmases were spent in the cold of an English winter, whereas hers have all been spent in the heat of Africa. But that's why we still have a hot meal, turkey and all the trimmings. A cold meal, though it might be more suitable in this climate, just wouldn't do it for us. I also remember that before I had Tamsin, Christmas didn't really mean all that much to me. I wasn't a Christian. And although I enjoyed the holiday, it wasn't particularly special. Then Tamsin came along and I began to relive my childhood experiences through her. And I wanted to make things special for her. And again, Christmas began to have some meaning. But now, now it is very different for both of us. As Christians, we both experience the joy of Christmas in a very different way, a much more meaningful way although we both still enjoy the turkey. This will be a different Christmas for many people. Smaller gatherings of people, an awareness that many are suffering, that there's been so much loss in the world, of life, of economic prosperity, just of happiness in so many cases. But for Christians, there is always hope in our hearts and joy and peace in our spirit, despite external circumstances, because we worship an awesome God. Today, I just want to reflect on the gospel reading. And I have to admit here that when I looked up the gospel reading for today, I got it wrong. Very one. I got completely the wrong one. I don't know how. But sometimes I think when that happens, it's because the Spirit is pushing you in that direction. Perhaps this is the reading that God wants us to hear today, so I'm going to stick with it. And so, let's listen to the good news proclaimed in John's Gospel, chapter 1, reading verses 19 to 28. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Now this was John's testimony when the Jews of Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Christ. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the desert. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now some Pharisees who had been sent questioned him. Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He <coughs> is the one who comes after me, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ on the Lord. I think the most important thing about this reading is the way that John the Baptist deflects attention from himself towards Christ. He denies being Christ. He denies being Elijah. He denies being the prophet. 
Now the Jews remembered that Elijah did not die, but was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind. You can read that account in 2 Kings chapter 11. They believed that he would return to earth to announce the end times, that he would come to prepare the world for the Messiah. The reference to the prophet comes from Deuteronomy 18, where God is preparing his people to enter the promised land, and he tells them that he will raise up a prophet and that the prophet's words must be listened to. This is really just a collective reference to the many prophets whom God would send and which culminated in the Messiah. But John the Baptist responds to the questions about his identity <clears throat> only by quoting those beautiful words from Isaiah that we know so well. I am the voice of one calling in the desert, make straight the way for the Lord. John sees himself as nothing, nothing but a voice, a voice pointing straight to Jesus. And of course, that's where our focus should be. It is also a reminder to us that we too should not be self-important. At Christmas time, we reflect on the way that God sent his son to be born into this world as a baby, as a human being, so that we could know him, know that he has experienced all that we have, has experienced pain and sorrow, so that he understands us and all the difficulties that we go through. In Jesus, we see compassion and care. We see love. We see life as it should be lived. And from him, we receive our life, abundant life, when we stay close to him. We receive strength to cope with whatever this world throws at us. We know that we are loved and cared for, and that our sins have been dealt with through his saving grace. But what is equally important is we remember that Jesus is God incarnate. So that when John points us to Jesus, Jesus shows us God. As we read the Gospels and come to know Jesus more closely, so we come to know the God whom we serve. And that to me is an awesome thought. Amen. Let us pray. As we enter this week, leading to the celebration of your birth on Christmas Day, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for showing us how we should live. May we follow your example and lead our lives in loving service to others. May we remember too from John's example that we should not be too self-important. Give us the grace to forget ourselves and think only of you. Thank you, God Almighty, that through getting to know Jesus, we come closer to knowing you. Although much of you will remain a mystery to us in this life, we can come to know your love, your compassion, your strength and your saving grace. Heavenly Father, Christmas is a time of coming together to share our love of family and friends as we celebrate the birth of your son, Jesus. May we remain careful this year, Lord. May we not be responsible for any spread of this virus. And we ask you to be with those who are suffering from COVID-19 and with all those healthcare workers <coughs> whose Christmas this year will be spent fighting the effects of this virus. Keep them safe, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen. We pray the prayer for Africa. God bless Africa. Protect our women and children. Transform our leaders. Heal our communities. Restore our dignity and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, all whom you love and for whom you pray, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Lots of love to you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas and keep safe. Goodbye.